How to knit a dishcloth for beginners. Hi everyone, my name is Norman. I run the blog nimbleneedles.com and today I want to show you a very easy dishcloth knitting pattern. The pattern is available for free on my blog and it's a lovely and very easy project for beginners. You only need to know how to knit the knit stitch, the purl stitch and of course a cast on and a bind off. It takes me less than an hour to finish one. So I feel it's perfect if you want to knit more than just one or you need a cute little gift. Let's dive right into it and let me show you how to knit a dishcloth. To knit this dishcloth you will need a nice worsted cotton yarn for needle size 7 in two colors. You can also pick linen but I'd stay away from wool as you can't throw it into the washing machine at high temperatures. Then you will need knitting needle size 7, uh, you can use single pointed or double pointed needles and you will need a tapestry needle and some scissors. You will find links to all of these items in the description below. And then of course remember to go to my blog where you will find the written instructions. And then we're ready to go. Start knitting this dishcloth by casting on 32 stitches with a long tail cast on, leaving a tail of 5 to 6 inches for weaving in later on. If you don't know how to cast on stitches yet, I'll put a link to my full tutorial up in here and in the description below. So we need a total of 32 stitches. So I cast on all my 32 stitches and now we need to knit 5 full rows of garter stitch. So it's 5 rows of pure knit stitches. Simply knit across your cast on, turn around, knit across and so on until you have 5 rows of your garter stitch and I'll see you there. So while I'm knitting the last row in garter stitch we can talk about the repeat for the following rows. Row number 6 will be knit 3, knit 1, purl 1 and then knit 3. Row number 7 is exactly the same repeat and row number 8 will be knit 3, purl 1, knit 1, knit 3 and row number 9 will be knit 3, purl 1, knit 1, knit 3 again. Essentially this boils down to a simple moss stitch with a 3 stitch garter stitch selvage. So let's knit it together. So it's 3 knit stitches and then it's knit 1, Purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and so on. And then at the very end, you add three more knit stitches. It's like I said, a very simple repeat. If you don't know how to purl yet, I will put a link to my tutorial up in here as well. So always knit one purl one and in the next row it's going to be the exact same repeat. And after two rows you switch the repeat to knit three. So it's uh, three selvage stitches and then it's purl one knit one. So you lead with a purl stitch followed by a knit stitch but otherwise you keep alternating between those uh, two stitches and this will create the simple moss stitch. And we need a total of 36 rows of moss stitch as I am already here on my fourth row. This means I will need to knit 32 more rows in the exact same repeat. And in row number 10, I finished, just finished row number 9. And in row number 10, you start with the exact same repeat you already knitted in row number six. So it's knit three and then you knit one, purl one. So it's always two rows uh, where you lead with a knit stitch and two rows where you lead with a purl stitch. So I'm about halfway through with my dishcloth here and I quickly wanted to check how things are going on your end. For me the pattern is coming along quite nicely. Now just a quick reminder, if you made a little mistake here or there, don't stress about it. This is a dishcloth after all and not a ball gown. 
And uh, if you're having trouble remembering the repeat, then here are some tips and tricks. But before, I really love shooting these videos, but I need your support. So why don't you give me a little thumbs up right now or leave a nice comment or even subscribe to my channel. But back to the tips. If you are having trouble keeping track of your knitting, you can use a simple row counter like these here and then write out the pattern on a little piece of paper or just print mine out and then cross out each line you knit. And then you can simply look at your uh, row counter and say, okay, I'm on row 20 now and row 21 or row 20 means knit three and then knit one uh, per one and so on. So this is really, really helpful, I think. So instead of using a row counter, you can also learn to read your knitting. In most stitch, you always stack two knit stitches upon each other and then you lead with a purl stitch and then you stack two purl stitches upon each other and then you switch again. And if you only see one purl stitch or one knit stitch, at the start of your round, so like this. Well, then you need to knit across all stitches the way they appear one more round. And here's one more thing. You are constantly bringing the yarn to the back to knit and bringing it to the front to purl. And I've seen a lot of beginners, they accidentally catch the yarn with the needle as they bring um, it to the back. And this would create a yarn over and it, a yarn over increases your stitch count by one and, and creates a little eyelet here. So you probably don't want that. So pay attention as you bring your yarn to the back and to the front again, that you don't accidentally catch it with your needle like this. So this is just another little section of me knitting a couple of stitches. So many people keep on telling me how they love watching other people knit and how it calms them. So maybe you are one of them and you just enjoy watching me knit. And this section is all for you. So I finished all those rows in moss stitch and now we need to add four more rows of garter stitch. So from row number 42 on four rows of garter stitch. So again, it's knit stitches across all stitches and rows and four rows of it. It should be quite easy to finish and I'll see you there. So I finished knitting those four rows of garter stitch and now it's time to change colors. I'm using white here, but you could use any other kind of contrasting color as well. And if you just want to knit your dishcloth in one color well, then continue knitting with the same yarn. So I simply start knitting with the new yarn. So no special joining method. And you need to knit one row, just one row of knit stitches in the new color. So simply knit across. So I finished knitting this one row and what you can do now is you can cut off um, the first color like this, just cut it off. And then while the stitches are still on the needle, I tie a simple knot. So I tie a uh, very, very simple knot to secure those stitches. Normally, I'm not the biggest fan of knots, but in this case, I think it really helps to stabilize the yarn. And now turn your work around and bind off all stitches. If you don't know how to bind off yet, I'll put a link to my tutorial up in here and in the description below. But otherwise, simply bind off all stitches the normal way. No special bind off is required. Just bind it off right away. And this will add a lovely little contrasting edge to your dishcloth that makes it look special. So simply bind off. Don't bind off too tightly. Just, you know, a normal bind off. Um, this is no wearable, so it doesn't need to be stretchy or anything. Just bind off those stitches. 
So I finished binding off all stitches and now there's only one stitch left. You could cut off the working yarn now and call it a day, but personally I prefer adding a little hanger to my dishcloth. So what I do is I cast on 18 stitches with a knitted cast down. Now don't be scared if you don't know how to do that. First of all, I'll put a link to my full tutorial up in here and in the description below. But you might as well just watch me because this technique is super, super simple. So here's what you have to do. Simply knit one knit stitch. And now don't drop that loop. Instead, lift that loop onto the left needle. And now knit another stitch and lift the loop onto the left needle. And now knit another stitch and so on until you have all together 18 stitches. And you might notice that I twist the stitches as I cast them on. Normally you wouldn't do this when you're knitting a knitted cast on, but in this case it really doesn't matter and it makes the process so much smoother and faster to knit. So I cast on 18 stitches and now simply bind off these 18 stitches straight away. So bind them off the normal way always knit one and then pass over and so on. You already know how to do this and this will create a little um, sturdy strap. So I finished binding off all those 18 stitches and now you can simply cut the yarn here. Just cut it and pull out those this last stitch here. And now that we finished knitting our little dishcloth, uh, we need to weave in the tails. So first we have this tail here and we'll use it to create our little hanger. So I go through the last stitch here and then through this stitch here, this stitch here. And then you can simply tie a little knot here at the base tie a little knot just like this and then maybe go in one or two times like one so sew over and then you can hide the rest of your tail on the inside of this little strap here just weave in the rest through the strap like this this and then you can cut the tail and there is already your little strap and then we need to weave in those four tails the traditional way and the other tails you should weave in like this you could go through the edges but I feel for cotton that's all actually not my preferred method instead I go here in between the rib. So here's a garter stitch rib and here's a garter stitch. And I pick these ribs here and bear right through them. See, I go right through them. If you have a sharp tapestry needle, this process will be much easier. And then you need to go one more time into the other direction. So I do it like this. And then I go into the other direction. So I pick the rib that is one row above. And then I go through each and each little strand one more time. I hope you can see this because this is a bit fiddly and tiny. So this is how I do it. I hope you can see it. And I go one more time into other direction like this. This and then I cut off tail 
and I feel this method is both very invisible and quite secure. And once you wove in all tails, you finished my dishcloth knitting pattern. I hope it wasn't all that hard, was it? So here are some last pointers. First of all, of course you can knit this dishcloth in a different size. If you say, well, Norman, this is a bit too big for me. Well, then maybe just cast on 26 stitches instead of 32 and then only knit 32 rows instead of 36 and you will get a dishcloth that is maybe a tiny bit smaller or you could obviously go bigger as well. And then you can switch the knitting stitch pattern here on the inside. This is moss stitch, but you could obviously go for double moss stitch or any other knitting stitch pattern you like. Here's one dishcloth. I uh, finished using the star stitch and I think it looks extremely pr pretty. Sadly, it isn't reversible, but the front is extremely nice. And I leave it up to you and your creativity to find a stitch you want to practice. Just make sure you pick something with a lot of structure and maybe not a lace pattern as you probably want to use your dishcloth and not only look at it. And that's it. That's how to knit a dishcloth for beginners. I really hope I was able to show you this easy knitting pattern and you were able to knit along. Please give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed watching, comment with your feedback or your questions. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.